My name is Adam, and uh, this season, season leading up to the election, I wanted to do a Adam Asks political special, looking at some of the local politicians in Norfolk and asking who they are and what they're standing for, and uh, and to find out um, some some of the info behind what we hear on the news. So I'm here with Dr. Mike Spencer, who is the Conservative candidate for Norwich South. So hello and welcome to the Thank show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Pleasure so, to speak to you. If you could sum up in one line, what would you say? Who are the Conservatives? So we are the party of compassionate conservatism, responsible, uh, looking after the economy, but also uh, we believe in equality of opportunity for all, regardless of wealth or wherever you are in the country. So that's really what we're all about. Okay. So, and, and in this election this year, 2019, what is the most important, what do you think is the most important uh, topic that's being talked about? Well, I know that there's a certain B word that's come up <laughs> quite a lot in the campaign trail. Um, so that's obviously been quite a big thing people have been talking about. There's been a lot of frustration on the doorstep over the past few months about why you politicians, you're all the same, you never get things done. You know, mm -hmm. we decide, we, we vote for something, we never get things done. I mean, that's been quite a big message. And a lot of that, I think, is about Brexit and what's happened in the years since the referendum people have seen that there's been a gridlock, it's sort of, the perception is that government has ground to a halt. Mm. I so the B word is Brexit, not Boris here. <laughs> That's been the bigger B word, Brexit. Boris recently, obviously. Um, I've got to say, actually, he's been, in my experience in the Dorset, quite a popular figure. Um, okay. Here in Norwich, in Norwich people, people like him because so, this is a Labour stronghold in a way isn't it uh, uh, yes I know in, and obviously North Norwich is a is, is a conservative seat though not a stronghold by any stretch of their own yeah. imagination and uh, how are you feeling about the possibility of uh, do you think you've got a chance well absolutely yeah I mean I'm in it to win I'm realistic that it's a tough job but I'm feeling very positive about it I've got a great team behind me and just positive because of the conversations I've had on the doorstep, there's been a huge amount, A, of positivity towards Boris, mm. personally, and what we're doing to try and get past the um, gridlock of Brexit, but B, also there's been, people just are not happy with the way the Labour Party's going. They're not happy with Corbyn, they're not happy with the local MP, and actually there's a lot of positivity I'm finding at the moment. Okay, that's interesting. Because right, you kind of see, like on social media, obviously um, there's there's a kind of younger bias to social media and uh, and certain types of people. But it seems that kind of the Tories are the bad guys, and 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 I know not everyone loves Corbyn, but it, it, you know they some people do kind of feel that he's this sort of saviour figure. Do you feel that the Conservatives are the bad guys? Well, obviously not. <laughs> obviously not. Um, so, I mean, I only got onto Twitter about a week and a half ago. <laughs> so, whether that says about my age or just being out of touch, I don't know. Um, okay, so, so with the, um, just moving on to a slightly different thing, what, do, you, do you believe in uh, climate change? Do you believe climate change is a man-made thing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I personally am very passionate about the environment. Okay. Um, and also, I believe that the Conservatives have done a huge amount in terms of bringing us forward on climate change. I mean, who would have thought we'd be leading the developed countries in terms of the decarbonisation? Are we doing that? Oh, we are. We are. Um, so also we have... More so than somewhere like Germany or Norway. So we, we are leading the G20, I think, in terms of the decarbonisation. Okay. Um, and we have managed to get the use, the, the dependency on coal power down from a third to almost being independent of coal power. Now, we've, we've had some days when we've 
mm. not use it at all. So we simply were fighting for offshore wind uh, power. There's a lot of very positive stuff, in it. and also very importantly, the commitment to the 2050 carbon zero target. Mm. So we're the first uh, major country to have such a commitment at all. So okay. there's, a, there's a lot to be positive about. I mean, there's there's more that can be done. Because I'd love to dig into that's like my thing, but uh, we don't have time. Mm -hmm. so if there is such an issue as like cataclysmic uh, environmental climate change uh, being on the horizon, mm -hmm. and uh, and yet people are still saying Brexit is the most important thing in this. Because obviously, if it doesn't matter if we're members of the European Union if we're not alive anymore. Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is that it's been very difficult to get parliamentary time to focus on the real issues that people in the country want mm -hmm. when everything has been dominated by Brexit. But behind the scenes, as I said, there's been some really good work going on. And for example, there's a group of Conservative MPs in the Conservative Environment Network who pledged to be part of that parliamentary caucuses. Mm -hmm. And so if I was elected, I would pledge to join that group. And they are really leading the way in terms of green conservatism. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, okay, on the, on the light of decarbonisation and, uh, and the environment, what about, um, what do you think about the expansion of Norwich Airport? Or indeed Heathrow, actually. But Norwich is our local one. I, I mean, personally, I've got to say that everything, I mean, I, I would be wanting to maximise the transport infrastructure for Norwich. I think we've got so much to offer, and I think it's only going to be by having the highest quality transport infrastructure, road, rail, and air, in and out of Norwich, that we're going to have the best growth and create the most jobs and opportunities. So clearly there is a trade-off between air travel and... Cataclysmic life-ending yeah. climate change. So I think it's about how do we manage this, and I would be arguing that we have to be clever and we have to be moving towards electric uh, planes as an objective. So we have an opportunity in the UK. We are leading the world in terms of the green technologies. I would say we should be trying to pioneer um, electric aviation, for example. Mm -hmm. There's already the suggestion that it could be brought in for the smaller aircraft. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should try and turn Norwich into an electric aviation hub, spearheading the way there and bringing thousands upon thousands of high-tech jobs for the people of Norwich. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Um, so on that, uh, I see the, in the news this week uh, the Conservatives nationally were pledging a million new houses over the next five years, uh, which were uh, generally, I'm thinking generally privately built. So in Norwich there are 69,995 houses or oh, uh, households in Norwich, and uh, so that would equate to um, 15 new cities the size of Norwich being built in the next five years which is just mind-blowing. Uh, who do you vote for if you want to conserve things? Well, conserve things in what way? Because oh, that's a lot of countryside to build over. Well, if we, we recognise that we have to provide this housing. That's a fundamental. So it's important, given that we need this housing, that we do it in a sustainable way. So I would argue that we vote for the Conservatives because we are pledging that this should be built in a sustainable way and using sustainable technologies. Okay, even though that's done by uh, private sectors who kind of have, uh, you know, they're less, um, less controlled than if they were built by councils or housing associations, right? I mean, the chances are that things will probably be done for a lower price. There'll be competition, um, probably to a higher quality, if we move things from the state sector to the private sector, that just seems to be the pattern, uh, like a broadband, a topical example. Ooh, but yeah. it's been through the competition between private companies, the Virgin, the EE, BT, that we have such high speeds and low costs now. Mm. So um, as conservatives, we tend to favor small state 
but the responsibility being placed into the wider community. One of the things that someone asked on social media was, uh, was do you feel the Conservatives have been uh, kind to benefits claimants? Because I've, I've heard, something I heard which I thought was fascinating is that if you've got a long-term like medical issue, like say you uh, don't have either of your legs, had a double your amputation, you still need to renew your benefits claim because they want to see if you've got better or not. Uh, how do you feel the Conservatives have treated over the last 10 years um, benefit claimants? Yeah. I mean, the fundamental thing really is that as Conservatives, we actually want to protect the most vulnerable, the poorest in society. That really is the overriding principle. And so we recognise that with a lot of these changes recently, in a number of cases, things just haven't worked out as we'd have wanted. I mean, the over so, I mean, for example, universal credits. So the intention behind rolling together six different benefits into one to make things simpler and more effective. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. But when you start something new, it has to be given the correct amount of funding, and I think probably the transition process to universal credit hasn't had the full level of funding that it's required. Mm -hmm. And so I think we do need to try and improve the system as it currently is. I think we do need to increase the funding for universal credit. We need to look very specifically at the process and where for certain people it's, it's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for many, many people, it's actually working well. But unfortunately, by the nature of the sort of system, if somebody is falling in the cracks, they are a vulnerable person. So I think it's really important mm -hmm. that we look in detail, I want to look in detail at the process, exactly who is falling in the cracks. Are there systemic, systematic things we can do to improve? Mm -hmm. But I think the overall principle, the guiding principle, is a sensible one. And if we can make things simpler, for claimants, mm. then actually that has to be a good thing. No, oh, okay. Okay, well, um, because I suppose uh, kind of related to that is the NHS, which is something a lot of people are talking about. And you're a doctor. Yeah, so it's cool. close to my heart, yeah. Uh, despite what the Conservatives say, everyone, everyone seems to presume that your options are if you want to privatise the NHS, then you vote Conservative. If you want to, if you want it to keep it, you vote someone else. But what, what's, the, what's the answer to that? Yeah, I mean, maybe as an expert in media, you can help me with this conundrum because the Conservatives have had the stewardship of the NHS during 44 of its 70 years. Um, and election after election, the Labour Party are saying, oh yes, they want to privatise it. <laughs> and it doesn't happen, obviously, because we've committed time after time that we're never going to do it. Um, so that's a tricky one. I don't exactly know... The, the problem with that, to be frank, is that that not only is scaremongering, but it's scaremongering that plays to the most vulnerable in our society, those that depend on the NHS. I mean, we have said time after time, it is never going to be privatised under us. It's not going to be up for sale. It's not going to be on the table in trade negotiations. But I guess the, the, the problem, I mean, fundamentally, is how can one prove the unprovable, mm. apart from retrospectively when it's not happened. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so, because I don't think that like Serco, when you go to the NNN, Serco are doing things like the food stuff and, and, and running the building, there's a big, um, that's an issue, who owns the building and paying that back. Mm. Um, Which I would say, actually, that is the biggest problem NNN have. Mm. The millions upon millions that they're paying as part of PFI, mm. which was brought in under the Labour government. Yeah. They were signed up to that millstone around their neck. And that's at the root cause of their problems. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I was going to, because I did think, oh, that's a good one to ask. And, and if I speak to Clive Lewis, then uh, it, that was one that I really want to... Well, I'm sure he would on. say, oh, this is, this is clearly conservative, even though we did it. But <laughs> actually, you cannot get away from the fact that, yes, maybe prior to Labour's period, this idea came about. But fundamentally, Labour was the midwife mm. of that delivery. And at the time, we were already saying that this is not a good idea. Let's say the Tories get in the next five years, um, and, and there are some things that could arguably be seen as privatisation. How would that make you personally feel? I mean, to be clear, those things are not privatisation. 
No, okay. So, for example, um, people sometimes, they go to the GP, they get their blood test forms, and they can either have it in the practice when the phlebotomist there, bring it to the hospital, or bring it to, for example, their local Sainsbury's. There are other supermarkets. Uh, but yes, the local Sainsbury's. And for many people, that makes things convenient. And mm -hmm. so getting private companies involved where it helps A, service, or B, value for money, or C, convenience, I mean, those, that, that is not a bad thing. For the patient journey, and look at the patient journey, those tend to be positives. But the fundamental is that the service itself is, and always will be, a national health service. There'll be no privatisation. No, e even if that looks, because ideologically, and that's fair enough, the, the Conservatives are, we say, well, you know, the market is pretty good at stuff like this, and, you know, the West has shown that that is, that is generally true. I know some people might shout at the screens at me saying that, but does it feel like we're kind of, uh, on principle, just being like, no, the, it's a national health service, it will always be nationalised, even if it ends up being like, uh, like the coal mines or or, uh, or, the, or the railways maybe or uh, and other things it's just like this is logical to do this um, by companies. No, I don't think there's any ideological reason why I would want things to go into contracting out to private companies as a goal in its own right. Mm. Um, I think it's not about the means it's about the end and the end fundamentally is delivering the highest quality services to everybody mm -hmm. okay okay hey, one really quick one do you feel like the country has got better or worse over the last 10 years it's a difficult one um, because at the moment I look around and there's a real sense of lack of trust in politicians um, however I recognize that we are doing great things in terms of achieving growth at the same time as decarbonizing. So there's great stuff happening. There's also the sense that the country is fed up with how politics is going. Um, and you mentioned 10 years. I mean, the context to that is we've just come out of the effects of an enormous uh, recession. And the, the global financial crash. So things have been coloured by that. Uh, but I think there's a lot of positivity now. Um, I think if we can only just get past this stalemate of Brexit, then we can start to rebuild trust in politics. Uh, we can hopefully have a government, have a parliament that is collaborative, people are working together, there's common sense in parliament, and we can just start to unify the country and move forwards. Cool. So this is Mike Spencer speaking to Adam Jackson. Uh, the Mike is the Conservative candidate for Norwich South in the 2019 elections. And um, thank you very much for joining thank me. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Uh, brilliant.